Modern genetic technologies might be a key part of meeting the challenge to feed a growing population. Julie MacDonald visited the John Innes Centre in Norwich to see how groundbreaking technologies are producing plants with the potential to produce food that is sustainable, more nutritious and even produce vaccines that improve human health. It's a global challenge, figuring out how to feed a growing population and how to keep everyone healthier for longer. Here on Norwich Research Park, scientists from the John Innes Centre are hard at work discovering how plants and microbes might provide the answers the planet needs. Professor George Lomonosov has developed a groundbreaking technology from his fundamental research into plant viruses. Using plants to grow medicines, his innovation allows safer and more effective alternatives for vaccinations against flu and the Zika virus and could help to eradicate polio. So just talk me through what John's doing here. Well, he's doing a process called agroinfiltration and it's a way of getting the bacteria which are going to carry the genes we want into plant leaves. We've been using plants as bioreactors to produce novel vaccines more quickly and at lower cost than is possible using conventional systems to produce vaccines for deployment in developing countries. Also in these labs, crucial work focuses on another global challenge, how to develop crops better suited to the environmental conditions of the future. A lot of the work we do is aimed at understanding the basic biology of plants and microbes. Um, but that work then continues th right the way through to um, projects that are more, maybe more applied and in which we can exploit the biology of plants and microbes for societal benefit and basically economic growth. By 2050 we're going to have another two billion people on the planet and right now we have people who are starving, who are uh, receive insufficient food. We have to feed those two billion more mouths. And part of solving this challenge is figuring out how to future-proof the world's wheat crops, the focus of Dr Cristobal Wawi and his team. On average, we get roughly 20% of our calories from wheat every day, every person in the world. So that means that we need to find the science to help the breeding to be sure that we can get production uh, all across the world. So we're trying to understand the genetics of yield, trying to understand what are the genes that control the components that define how much, uh, not just again, not just starch, but also how much protein and micronutrients are in the grain. So it's trying to see how we can get a grain that has more energy, but also more nutrients and, and, and protein, um, with hopefully less use of resources. Genetic technologies used to produce foods could be part of the solution to tackle a number of serious global food and health questions. At the moment, the regulatory landscape is complex, meaning that many innovations don't get into the field or onto your plate. Scientists are able to increase the amount of nutrition-packed pigment in everyday fruits and vegetables like tomatoes. In fact, they're already developing a purple type of tomato that is supercharged with nutrition. At the John Innes Centre, it's Professor Cathy Martin's research that's producing the purple nutrient-rich tomatoes. Tests in animals using the purple tomatoes as a dietary supplement showed promising results. We used a cancer-prone mouse that, uh, and if the mice were eating a diet supplemented at 10% with red tomatoes, then they lived the normal length of time, which is 140 days on average. But if they ate a diet supplemented with purple tomatoes, they lived 30% longer. So these are not ready for human consumption? Not yet, yet, because they're genetically modified. We need to go through regulatory approval. We're aiming to produce a juice. So by packing the good stuff into, <laughs> into fruits that people actually eat quite, in quite large amounts and eat as processed foods as well, we're hoping to be able to improve the contribution of protective compounds in the diet. So scientists here at this centre of excellence are turning fundamental plant science, genetics and microbiology into powerful solutions. Going after...